Thank you. All right, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Terry Shum. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development for the city. I wanna thank you all for joining tonight to talk about uh, Duval Field Park uh, one more time. So um, I see that joining us tonight, we have council member Kabir. Uh, we might be joined by others later. I'll try to announce if they uh, come in. So again, um, it's good to have you here tonight to review the design plans for Duval as they progress since the last community meeting, which was about a year ago. Since then, various park features have been selected and plans refined. And we're seeking your input again on what is presented tonight and we'll share your comments and um, feedback with the city council when we present these plans to them in September. So it looks like we're scheduled for September um, uh, 6th. I'll be able to confirm that um, completely um, tomorrow. Um, I know it's, it's a long agenda, but we're hoping um, to get it to city council at that time. So I'm gonna start by introducing the consultant team from KCI Technologies and then they'll go ahead and start their presentation. So we have Steve Jarek, who is uh, the civil engineer on the project. We have Rick Hone, landscape architect. And we also have Wiza Kompayak, also a landscape architect who is um, dialing in from Thailand. So thank you, Wiza, for making, making this, this happen. So um, we'll get started then. I believe Steve will kick us off. I just ask that if you could hold your questions and comments to the end of the presentation, um, we will get to all of them. So with that, Steve. Great, thank you, Terry. Sure. Um, nice to meet all of you, members of the community um, and Councilman Kabir. Uh, Steve Jarrett, KCI Technologies. I'm the project manager and also the civil engineer for the project. Um, I guess first, point of business here is can everybody see my screen and is it legible great yes okay fantastic all right so this evening we've already kind of gone through introductions um, but we'd like to kind of touch on the overall project goals uh, talk through our existing conditions plan as well as the progress on the 100 year floodplain delineation then get into some fun stuff with the park and playground improvements review uh, the field improvements and the, the surrounding lighting review, and then touch on schedule, permitting, the budget, and then really we'd love to get some, some good feedback from the community on what you've seen here uh, so that we can really advance this into the next stage of design and construction. Right, so as Terry mentioned, um, you know, this isn't the first time we've been uh, uh, presenting to you all. Um, and really our plan is a implementation of a visioning plan. And then we move forward with three conceptual options. Based on feedback we got from the community and council, we went with a preferred concept plan. Um, the plan that you will see tonight um, is an engineered plan that is really a refinement and implementation um, of the preferred concept plan that was uh, selected by you all. Um, and council uh, last July. So um, I, I think everybody here is familiar with the site, um, but I will point out uh, the project boundary is, is here shown in this dark green line. Um, you know, we're surrounded by Rhode Island Avenue uh, to the west, uh, 50th to the east, and we have Cheyenne, Cherokee, um, on the east as well. Um, I wanna draw your attention to this blue line here. And that line is a storm drain easement where there is a large um, storm drain line that is owned by the county uh, within city property. So that's a, I think it varies from 48 inches to around 54 inches RCP pipe um, carrying drainage uh, throughout the site, you know, picking up drainage from our site and then also carrying offsite drainage through the site. 
um, as part of the permitting process, Prince George's County um, required that we map the 100 year floodplain limits um, for the, the property. And so we've gone through with a floodplain study. Um, we've determined that our project and as a result of our project, there will be no increase elevation of a mapped floodplain on the property. Um, additionally, we've gotten a natural resource inventory approved for the site, which is essentially the mapping of existing environmental features. Um, there are, you know, mostly it's, it's trees on this site um, that are the um, environmental features that are of interest to the county. So those are shown in these green circles there. Um, we've also completed a boundary survey uh, for the property and we have submitted a stormwater management concept and that stormwater management concept will be advanced and approved after the approval of our floodplain study. Um, just to go back real quick, um, the goals of the project really to improve and enhance the existing park facilities, um, to also maximize the neighborhood oriented park uses based on our site constraints, um, to enhance pedestrian connectivity, and then to maximize tree saving opportunities with our development. You've got a lot of nice trees and we're gonna do everything that we can to save, save those trees and make them a highlighted feature of the project. So I think, Rick, why don't you take it from here? We'll talk a little bit about the playground area, uh, just so everyone, I think you all are probably aware, but the playground is going to remain where it is today, um, and that's located here at the end of Delaware Street. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, if you could go back to the previous slide, Steve. Sure. And you're going to have to do your best at pointing. I believe on Zoom, I cannot do my own pointing. So this first slide, so we're going to, we're going to sort of work our way, you know, through the project. And we're going to start, um, you know, it, it's north is actually off to the left. But I'm just going to say, when I'm talking, I'm just going to say top, bottom, right, okay? So um, this is a blow up area of the proposed playground area. So again, what we were, were advancing, what was approved as the preferred concept. And within that, um, you know, our, our, our primary goal was really to, to keep the playground where it's always been because it's really kind of a cozy atmosphere. There's trees in this area. And we, you know, our goal was to uh, maintain the trees as best as possible. We're saving quite a number of them. Um, and, you know, to just not lose the, the con contextual, you know, feeling that there is at the playground area today. So, you know, and sort of the, the playground area is resulting in what I would call sort of an egg shape, uh, but it, it encompasses, you know, all the playground equipment, which I'm going to delve into um, as we keep going. Uh, but it also a little bit to the bottom of the playground area. Um, there's also a shelter building with a picnic area. And so those sort of pair up very well um, for picnicking in the playground. So we, you know, that was something that we were uh, looking for as well. Now to the right side of the screen, what you'll see is uh, sort of an entry plaza coming in off the street and a tree save wall. So this wall is gonna be dual purpose. You'll come in off the street, uh, there'll be a little landing plaza, and then there'll be a seat wall. In the bottom right, there's a cross section of that seat wall. So it'll be a precast seat wall that is dual purpose. It's providing seating at the access to the park. It's providing visual um, uh, access to all the playground for parents to sit there. And it's also serving to help save the tree um, that is a, a pretty large tree right in the center of that wall. And all the other, if you sort of see the, the dull outline um, of, the, of the trees in that area, all of those that are being represented are being saved, including the ones to the left and the right of the proposed shelter building at the bottom of the, of the graphic. Okay, next slide, please. So 
We worked with uh, the playground consultant uh, for the project, which is Sparks at Play. They're not they're not joining this meeting, so we're sort of doing their presentation for them. But you know, we did bring into the team professional playground designers. Um, and they've been working with KCI and with the city to help evolve the design. Um, and what we were trying to achieve and that came out of the community meeting before was that, again, because of this natural setting, and you're not seeing the natural setting in this graphic, because there's going to be trees uh, all surrounding this playground. But imagine that there are trees surrounding it and that, you know, the playground equipment was, was chosen to sort of go with this, the nature theme of the area. So, um, you know, you'll see that the, like, for instance, the shade structures that are associated with the five to 12 playground area are simulated trees. And there's, there's other things like log forms and rock climbing features, which are going to pair up well. So um, if you go, go back to the left with the plan view, Steve, so, like I said, it's 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 like an egg shape, and if you if you look at the the visual graphic to the right, it looks kind of empty in places. But in fact, it's really not. If you look at the left side of the diagram, those are all the pieces of equipment, and the dash lines that are around them represent the fall zones for the equipment. So each of the pieces of equipment that the standard that he's outlining the swing right there, and the swing has a sixteen foot fall zone as opposed to all the other play equipment pieces, which have a six foot. So in reality, what looks a little bit empty on the right is actually you can see that in plan view, it's pretty, it's pretty packed full of equipment. And, um, so, and so now we'll just sort of explain some of the pieces of, of equipment as we look into it. If you could focus more in on that graphic and maybe enlarge it a little. So the, the right side of the graphic is the five to 12 um, playground, which also includes the, the swing structure and a couple of these spinners that are located in the central area. And then off to the bottom left is the two to five year old playground. And so as we, you know, I'll point out, uh, you can leave your cursor there, Steve. So at the bottom where his cursor hand is, these are called vibra chimes. And this is, uh, those are, you know, to emit sound, there's a, you know, you can hit them with it. There's a, you know, like a, like a drum head that you can uh, sound, you know, hit the bar and it and exudes like a very low tone. And so it's, it's acoustic, but it's also a vibration um, that, you know, that young children could sort of put their hands on it and feel the vibration as well. So that we're introducing the acoustical thing, uh, you know, and then the, the blue piece of equipment just beyond that is a, is a called a cozy dome. And that's kind of a cool structure because it, on the outside of the structure, you know, it's like a climbing structure. And on the inside, you can see there's a little tunnel access. So there's like a cozy atmosphere on the inside for, for kids to hang out, you know, and that's why they get to call it the cozy dome, I guess. Um, the, then the, the two to five year old play structure is, you know, both the play structure for the two to five and the five to 12, they're, they're obviously constructed with many different types of, you know, skill sets with climbing and with, you know, uh, you know, uh, being able to rope climb and to climb with slides and multi, multi, multiple purposes for uh, how to experience the playground experience. There's also like balance beam that's in the shape of a log. At the back side um, of the play structure, there's another little building, which is, a, it's, which is like a kid's cabin. So that's kind of a hangout thing. It's got a little fence and a mailbox incorporated into it. Uh, so, and then um, as we move over to the five to 12, uh, there's again, the, 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 there's a rather large um, multi-purpose play structure in the five to 12. Um, and so, the, um, you know, again, it's, we'll get, there's a couple other visual graphics that are blow ups after this slide, but let's just finish, let's just finish that one. Go back, Steve. So then the five to 12 is going to incorporate that the multi-purpose structure, um, sort of traditional belt swings there in the background. Um, and then to the left of that, there's something called a friendship swing, which is where you can get on a swing and face to face with, with another partner. 
Um, and then there's several little spinning pieces of equipment. Um, the smaller ones are, are sitting spinners. Um, and the larger one that's at the green foreground is called uh, an omni spinner. And it's rather low to the ground and, and it's easily accessible by a, by a wheelchair. But overall, actually, the playground is, 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 meets all the ADA. It's very accessible um, for anyone who's handicapped. So we can move to the next slide. After explaining all those pieces of the equipment, I think you pretty much know what's there. And then these are different views as you sort of go around of the same pieces of equipment from a different angle. Right. Um, and we should mention it's engineered wood fiber is the surfacing um, within with surrounding the, the all the play equipment. Correct. And again, that's sort of the nature theme. You know, they have different surfaces, which include poured in place rubber with a lot of color graphics, but we did not want to go that way. We want it to be more reflective of the surrounding, which would be the wood fiber. So we can move to the next slide. Okay. So uh, again, when if you remember the graphic where uh, earlier of the plan view to the to the bottom here. side, there you go. Right, so, right here. So that's the going to be the picnic pavilion. And the, the top left is a little paving pattern. We're going to have some special paving below that footprint. Um, and then within the picnic building, there will be two of the longer style picnic uh, benches. And then to the outside of the building, there will be the square table combinations. And the rest of those details off to the right are really the construction details for the picnic pavilion. What I will say is that the design and my, the the, you know, that we picked out for the pavilion. We wanted to pair it up with the, the general sort of wood look, um, beam structure look that is part of the existing concession stand area. And then you'll see when we get into the, to the performance space and the band shell space that it also is a good pairing with that sort of architectural style. Next slide. So as we progress um, through the site, uh, the next amenity feature here that we're showing is the multi-purpose court. And it is truly a multi-purpose court, but the primary function that we're proposing within that footprint is for pickleball. Pickleball is something that came out of the, again, the, the last community meeting is something that was desirable. It's very popular right now. And so the primary, uh, play space will be pickleball, but we also wanted it to be when people aren't playing pickleball, we're, we're providing a lot of graphics that sort of go around the pickleball space. Um, so, and those are, you know, with the jump 10 play paint, which is hopscotch like. Uh, Mirror Me is something is a game where you sort of, you know, put your hands and feet down in certain things and get in weird positions, kind of like Twister. Uh, but there's another twister that's off to the opposite side and then uh, shuffleboard for some of the older folks, little kids won't know what that is. Um, and uh, four squares at the top. And then if you go zoom back out again, you know, there's some color graphic type samples of, you know, how that's going to be represented. It'll be similar. Those are precedent images, um, you know, so we'll be providing the actual coloration of each of these has not been determined yet. We're simply choosing which graphics are gonna be shown at this point. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I guess before we leave this one, just wanna mention, you know, the seating areas that you've provided, um, you know, yes. ar around access, there. So. Correct, and then, so there is some observation areas there, access to the gates going into the space and then actually off to the bottom left there's a bicycle parking area with some trash and receptacles uh, bins right there. Okay, and then as we keep moving uh, further to the south of the site, um, we are, what you're seeing here on the left are two primary proposed amenities. And these are part of what I'm gonna call the base bid for the project, um, which is, you know, and we'll get into there's there's an alternate there's a couple alternates that we're showing that came out of the uh, previous community input meeting um, that we'll be we'll be discussing as we go further. But the base bid, which which is more in line with what the original um, master plan study 
um, evolved into, uh, we're proposing uh, permanent corn hall, which are the two paired up courts to the bottom. And so that's, you know, these are, um, you know, paved surfaces. Actually, it will be special paving like you see in the bottom center uh, graphic. So there will be, you know, concrete pavers that surround. It should look actually pretty attractive. Um, and uh, it's, again, a very popular amenity these days. And we've done it on several other projects, and it seems to work out quite well. And then uh, at the top is the bocce, um, bocce ball amenity. And again, that, that was another amenity that came out of, of the community input meeting. And so those are paired up off to the left side of the basketball court, which is on the right side. And the basketball court is, you know, a pretty traditional basketball court. Um, and it has, this whole area has, you know, several areas for uh, seating again, trash receptacles. We'll give you a view of what those will look like in a second. Um, and so that's, I think we can move to the next slide, Steve. Sure thing, sure thing. Um, there's more imagery of the basketball court. Again, it's, this basketball court will only have two um, hoops. It's, it's this one showing multiple hoops, but we're gonna only have the full court uh, basketball option. And uh, it'll have some lighting, which Steve will cover. And then the, the surfacing uh, that were, that's the preferred surfacing is the one that's the top left, which is a artificial turf surfacing. Um, we did have an alternate in there, which is a granular base but I think it has more maintenance involved with it. Um, and so our preferred option is to go with the artificial turf option. And it actually is a more common surface for a bocce. So next slide, please. And then as we move into the ball field area, um, you know, there's the ball field area is, is will resemble pretty much what's there today, but it'd be highly upgraded from what you see today. So there will be new backstops, new fencing. Um, there are gonna be player bench areas and small bleacher stand areas. Those will be, all be set on the concrete pads, unlike the bleacher area that's shown at the bottom right. All the areas will be set on the concrete pad and, uh, and then connected to the overall walkway and pathway system. And then Steve, I think this is yeah. So yeah. So um, in terms of field lighting, we're going to be uh, placing new LED lights on. You know, uh, I think it, I think they're sixty to eighty foot poles that are running around the perimeter of the soccer field as well as the baseball field. Um, we've we've teamed up with Musco Lighting on these. Uh, we really like their product um, and. The great thing about it is that with this LED technology, they're able to control the lights, um, you know, really focus in where the where the lights are being placed and really able to control spillage so that it's not going out into the neighboring properties. You know, we're very aware, you know, we're right up against the neighborhood. Um, so so the spill with these lights, it's, it's very low. Um, so you're going to have something for the soccer fields that's going to resemble something like this. And, you know, the controls of the lights is something that will be handled by the city. Um, they'll have, you know, a computer interface. They will also have um, an app on their phone so that they can control exactly when these lights come on and when they turn off. Um, so the, the lights are going to be around the soccer field. They're going to be um, on the multi-purpose sports courts, they will be placed in the parking lot area. And we're also um, exploring putting some bollard pathway lights uh, around the, um, the lawn stage area. All right. So this slide represents another amenity feature, um, which is the path system and exercise stations, which will be um, placed along the pathway system. So, if, you know, uh, if you look at the graphic, the, the bluish sort of highlighted tone represents the trail system within the project. And then it's numbered with one through eight. And each of those pieces of equipment 
um, are on the bottom of the graphic. And you know, they it actually provides a very full service type workout that will, you know, work on several. If you actually blow up on the plan view, Steve, sure. um, of not of that, but of the the plan views of each of the stations. So oh, there you go. Yep. So like uh, you know, like the first one is is like a crunch and and uh, sit up uh, station. And then the, the next one is more about, um, you know, push-ups off the bars. Um, so it worked more of an upper body workout. And then there's a stepper stations or some cardio. Um, and then again, um, uh, an elliptical machine. So a lot of these are sort of outdoor type amenities that you would find in a fitness gym. Um, and then parallel bars for working again, upper body and, uh, the pull-up station. So those are really working, you know, if you could do a few of those, you're in pretty good shape, uh, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we have the, you know, the, the bench press and the uh, um, squats. And then finally, you know, working the, the chest and back muscles. So, you know, if you do, if you do the circuit and you, you're pretty serious about it, you can get a pretty good workout walking the pass system. And, and that was the goal. And it, it is really more of an all ages type amenity. So now we move on to the, um, to the performance building. I don't know, do we have a do we have a slide of the, does the next slide show the overall plan or not? No. Uh, we can just yeah. look at the, this one, it's, it's fine. Yeah, okay. So again, just to orient where the space is, um, you know, the, the band shell is gonna be, you know, located directly off of uh, Cheyenne and, um, and 50th place. And so it backs out to that area. And, uh, and then we, again, this, this particular, amenity has evolved quite a bit since we first started the project during the you know the master planning stage it was a pretty simple little platform uh, for, as a performance area and but again through the community meetings there was more of a desire for it to be um, above that threshold and the city actually has been very interested in this structure um, as a potential you know gathering space for events so uh, it has evolved. And uh, so it's again, more of a elliptical egg shaped facility. What you see there is mostly lawn um, in, which is in the middle of the egg. And that was came out of the community input meeting as well is that when it's not being used for any kind of performance that it, you know, highly functions as a, as you know, just a, um, informal play space, you know, for young kids to go, you know, kick a ball or run around. Uh, but, you know, they can, they can get up onto the little terrace seat walls and hop down. So it's kind of an informal play space, but, you know, the, the primary goal in the big picture was to be able to have assemblies there and uh, we can move to the next slide then. So this is a blow up of the proposed band shell, if you will. Um, and the base bit again is the top left. What we want to call your attention is that we, we're not doing a custom design architectural band shell. Um, these are, you know, for lack of a better word, catalog ordered um, poly, the, the manufacturer is polygon structures, but they're very nice, they're very attractive. Um, they have acoustical walls at, as backdrops, so they force that sound to be out toward the audience, um, you know, and it's got sort of that timber glue lamb construction, which is a good look for the park, pairs up well with the picnic pavilion with the existing concession stand. Um, and so if you look at the, and actually the bottom um, to the right photo is an ad alternate that we're looking into um, for storage um, buildings, if you will, or storage uh, shelters off to the side of this building and, you know, where they would keep like chairs and for performances and equipment. And the only difference I will say that uh, visually is that we did not like the storage doors being facing the stage um, just for aesthetics that we would propose that the storage doors would be located off to the rear 
So Steve is pointing off, they sort of are in this wing position off to the two sides, uh, but they would be accessed from the rear um, through a door at the rear. And then that would sort of, there's a sort of a wider entrance plaza area off there where things can be brought in and out. And, and, um, and so then they would be taken out the rear and brought up the, a, a little ramp off to the side to get to the stage floor. And, uh, you know, and so that's you know, the up to the bottom left are more the construction architectural drawings. I think the pictures do, you know, speak better to what you're going to see there. Yep. And um, then these are details of the amphitheater seating area. So the look of it, again, these are precedent images, but would be very similar to, I would say very similar to the left photo. Uh, we're not going to have those little ramping down portions uh, that are in the right photo, but these would be precast um, seating areas that would be built um, into the the grade. And so it's, but it's fairly low level. You can see that it's the whole area is is there's not a lot of rise overall. There's just two tiers, and actually that the rear tiers would be a planting area. So that'll be planted to create a backdrop along, you know, which will sort of contain the area visually and have a nice aesthetic to it in within that area that Steve is highlighting right now. Um, so yeah, back out again. I don't know if there's anything more I want to mention about it. I think that covers it. And then throughout the, the park, um, along the pathway system associated with the shelter buildings, the multi-purpose courts, there's quite a few um, sitting areas and uh, being proposed and, and the language for those amenities has already been determined um, at the concession stand. So uh, we are going with the same uh, landscape structures, uh, benches without backs and benches with backs um, and trash receptacles um, for throughout the park. And then the, the bicycle racks is uh, sort of an upgrade beyond what you normally see. And uh, so it's, it's also a very attractive bike rack area. Um, and each of those seating areas will be have an under paving like you see in the graphics off to the right. And some of the areas will have benches or uh, trash receptacles associated with them and some do not. The trash receptacles are typically, you know, located where we think they're best suited based on, you know, where they are located throughout the park. So yeah, next slide. So All right. this slide um, covers the ad alternate. So during the previous community input meeting, there was a lot of interest in a potential splash pad amenity to be part of the proc, um, proc, uh, project. And so we've, again, working with Spark Set Play and their um, splash pad vendors, we've come up with a, a splash pad concept. Um, and again, if you look at the previous overall site plan, the, the, the base bid is what you're looking at here. So where the, the two permanent cornhole structures were proposed, we have a little bit larger footprint as he's you know, outlining here. Um, that would be a possible splash pad. Um, and then you can go back to, it would be located here and paired up with the bocce ball. So, and then, so it'd be kind of what we call, uh, we thought this sort of looked like, you know, pill capsule shape, um, if you will, uh, footprint. And so it's a pretty, you know, it's a, it's a fairly small area overall, but yet it, there's a lot of function and utility to it. So it'll have multiple different types, styles of jets um, at different heights and different, you know, timers would be associated with different water effects, some like bubblers and some that are spurting. Um, and so there's a lot of variety actually in a very small area. And we do know that splash pads are extremely popular um, today. And so that's why it was discussed in the earlier meeting. And so that's why it's included as an ad alternate. So again, not in the base bid because it wasn't part of the original pricing. Steve will cover the pricing a little bit at the end. Um, but, you know, there is an added cost uh, to the project to include the splash pad. 
And then along Rhode Island Avenue, where there's currently a chain link fence um, that runs along Rhode Island Avenue, um, our, we will be proposing to take down the chain link fence and provide sort of a, a timber guardrail look, kind of a little bit more national park looking. The timber will go along with the other timber structures that are being proposed in the project. Um, and then behind the, the, the timber guardrail, we're planting an evergreen hedge. So the, the guardrail it has a functional purpose, obviously, um, because if it wasn't there, there is the potential that cars could drive into the project right off of Rhode Island Avenue, which we don't want. Um, and, uh, and so the guardrail is there, but visually, I think the, the evergreen hedge will dominate the view. And so that'll sort of improve the view along the whole linear edge of Rhode Island Avenue. Right. All right. Um, so let's get into some civil engineering details because I'm sure that's everybody's excited to hear about those. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll start with the, the fun one, uh, which is the uh, turf field. So this is our natural turf field section. Um, so we, we plan on doing a, a regrading of that field. Um, the field is going to slope from Rhode Island, Rhode Island Avenue towards Cheyenne Cherokee street. Uh, in general, we've got a slope of anywhere from two to 4%. Um, we're proposing a sod, which will be a fescue mix sod over top of an eight inch root zone planting mix. Uh, which will be a mixture of sand and organics. Uh, below that, you're going to have six inches of clean washed stone and then a geotextile separation fabric, which separates the, the drainage stone from your excavated subgrade. And this subgrade will be sloped gently uh, towards Cherokee, the same as the, as the surface slope, so does the subgrade and water that makes its way through the turf field that is not taken up by the root mix is gonna be captured in a perforated uh, collector drain. And there are two collector drains. Uh, the first is gonna be running in this direction along the sideline. The other one will be running along this edge. All right, and then those will be collected and taken into the uh, storm drain that we've mentioned before, the county storm drain that's running out this way. So this is not a synthetic turf field. This is a natural turf field uh, that's been engineered for lack of a better term. Um, <clears throat> stormwater management. We've got five stormwater management facilities scattered throughout the park. Um, the, the purpose of these is you know, to treat surface runoff, um, to comply with the county and state regulations for treating our impervious area. Um, so we will have a stormwater microbioretention facility right here. We will have one right here. We will have one two in the parking lot area here. Um, and then the final one is gonna be adjacent to the amphitheater. Uh, where we're kind of reconfiguring an existing microbioretention facility um, that that shape is getting, you know, I'll say upset by this, uh, this pedestrian pathway. Um, <clears throat> why we like microbioretention facilities, uh, they give you a lot of bang for your buck in terms of stormwater management compliance. Um, they, you know, because you are counting the volume inside your, your planting media and your stone here, that means you have less of a footprint that's visible. Um, we also have a good, um, a, a pretty wide palette um, for selecting planting materials. So you can expect something that has grasses, uh, low shrubbery, and maybe even some small trees around there. So we find these are kind of the nicest uh, facilities that, that we can provide um, to comply with regulations, but also to, to be an amenity for the park. All right, and that takes us to scheduling and permitting. Uh, so we'll start with, with the good news and the things that we've accomplished so far. Uh, the boundary topographic surveys complete. Our geotechnical investigation uh, is complete. 
our conceptual design and our preferred concept selections complete. Uh, the mandatory referral with parks and planning is complete. Um, our natural resource inventory is complete. Our woodland conservation exemption is complete. So next up with permitting, we've got a floodplain study that's in under review uh, with Prince George's County DPI. Uh, we're estimating an approval of September of this year. Um, that floodplain study is a, a predecessor to the stormwater management concept. Um, We've had a submission of that already. It's been on hold because of this floodplain study. So hopefully once we have that uh, study completed and approved, we will get our stormwater management concept, which allows us to move into the fine grading uh, permit. And the fine grading permit is required for a contractor to break ground and um, start the earth moving process. So we've estimated that with a completion date of February of 2023. Um, Similarly, WSSC um, for supplying the water uh, because we are going to be irrigating the turf field. Um, that is estimated with a completion date of March 2023. Um, once we have the documents um, to 100% construction document level, um, which would be February of 2023, we would be sending that out to bid um, this would be a, an open bid for general contractors. We anticipate that process to, to extend through April of 2023, and then construction is estimated to go from April through October. Project budget is initially, I think it's $5.829 million at the moment. Our current base construction cost estimate is $5.4 million. Um, and we are tracking the following ad alternates. Um, the splash pad is estimated at $200,000. The amphitheater storage rooms, both design and construction is estimated at $100,000. And then we've been working with event staff to explore the possibility of outfitting um, our band shell structure with some nicer lights um, and AV equipment. And we estimate that would be around $150,000. All right. Um, with that, I think we're ready for questions. Thank you all for your patience with us. Steve, uh, uh, also along with that uh, splash pad, I think you mentioned that there was an annual cost of maintenance. Thanks cost. for thanks for bringing that up, Rick. Yes. So with um, the splash pad, uh, working with the vendor and and um, just kind of building on their experience. I think there's around a $30,000 per year um, cost of maintenance for that uh, splash pad, all the equipment, uh, pumps, electrical, filters, et cetera. As well as the construction disturbance of the existing, you want to cover that? In the yeah, yeah, thank you, Rick. Um, so with the splash pad, if it's going to be placed in this area here, uh, we've got to run utilities um, to feed that water supply, water return, um, pumps, and filtration. So we've identified a storage space uh, within the existing concession stand that could house that equipment. Um, what that's going to result in is disturbance of the paved plaza area here. Um, it would result in the demolition of this a small retaining wall, and then, you know, reconstruction of a small portion of the stormwater management facility, the existing one that runs on the backside of this concession stand. Um, additionally, we would have to find space elsewhere on site to locate the athletic equipment that's currently being housed in this room. Anything else I'm forgetting? <laughs> no, I think that covered it. Okay, yeah. good. So uh, I want to I want to thank Steve and Rick for a very uh, thorough presentation. I think you went through a lot of details that um, I hope are are helpful to the public for understanding uh, this project. So um, we'll move into questions now, but I do want to take a minute to acknowledge some council city council persons who have joined us. We've got council members. Esters, 
Adams and Mitchell, who have joined Council Member uh, Kabir at the meeting. So thank you for joining us. And if you raise your hand, we'll call on you one by one with questions and comments. So the first hand I see is from Elena Pitt. Hi, thank you for taking my questions. Um, I have sure. just a couple. Um, first, um, is there no access from, I think it's Delaware. So like the back where the playground is, is, is that what I'm understanding? Um, access, pedestrian access? Yeah. Yeah, th yes, there, there's a sidewalk, um, a new sidewalk being pro proposed off uh, to Delaware. Okay, and then so if they if you wanted to get to the playground though directly from Delaware, is it that you're gonna have to like go like down and around, or can you just go like you mentioned that seating like U shaped seating spot? Is that yeah, but, like all blocked there or it's all open free access? Yeah, this is all yeah this is all opened up at grade. The only the wall here is just right. You know, here's the kind of seat wall um around the tree right okay. but this is but this is all accessible at grade you know you could you could walk through this tree area or you could walk around like that okay okay thank you mm -hmm. um following on that are there um any like accessibility features like for the either in the playground so for you know kids that might need more that may have disabilities or for the paths where you're having the like workout equipment is that like accessible or yeah so um you know the site is is generally pretty flat so I, right now we don't have any issues with ada accessibility um you know we've got a pathway system that runs around uh the entire playground here uh it also connects the parking lot area it runs it runs south of um, the stormwater facility, north of the multi-purpose court, and then moves around. And for some reason, I can't highlight right now. There we go. So here's your here's your pedestrian pathway. Sure. Yeah, I guess I mean like any like play structures that are yeah. like. Oh, sorry, sorry, or... sorry, sorry. No, no, okay. no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, the playground is going to be 100% uh, ADA accessible. And they're, you know, so all, all the pieces of equipment um, will be accessible. And, you know, there are transfer stations um, on the, the, like the multi-purpose structures, there are locations okay, cool. so that, yeah, people within wheelchairs or disabilities will have access to everything. Oh, fantastic. Um, and then my last question is related to car and bike parking. Um, are there gonna be, good bike facilities, um, like bike parking facilities. And um, and then I was wondering why, if I'm remembering correctly, um, I guess what the decision, what was behind the decision to keep the 76 parking spaces, given that this is a neighborhood park that's got a pretty decent walk, bike, roll, transit shed. And that's my final, <laughs> my final question for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Which is like three parts, but that's okay, I guess. <laughs> Eve, if sure. you want to address the bike facilities, I could take the uh, parking if you like. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So um, I guess we've got the the bike facilities located here. Uh, those are adjacent to the ADA accessible parking spaces, um, and you know these are once you once you you could ride in from either direction, park your bikes mm -hmm. here. Um, and then be able to move throughout the site. Steve, haven't you retained the existing bike parking on the southern end of the park um, next to the walkway? Is that still there? It's a parking hub with some bike racks. Yeah, I haven't. We haven't touched any any of that. Um, so that that's all going to remain. Okay, so we should probably show that on the on the plans. I'm not I'm not okay. seeing it. So there okay. would be two locations. Okay. Um, and then we also have some bike racks um, near the uh, near the concession stand on the north side. So okay. um, yeah, I'll get I'll get those added in there. Yep, we'll get that added. It's okay. a good question. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So ultimately, and in terms of the there. parking, um, the vehicular parking, we are changing circulation uh, slightly. So maybe you could review that. Um, but we are keeping the same number of parking spaces as exists currently, only reconfiguring them and providing better access to them. So, um, right. So I everything will be, yeah, everything will be one way until until this point. Right. And currently, you cannot enter the park from Delaware. It's one way out only, and it'll become two way in the renovation. Thank you. And because there are so many attractive features in the park, um, it is a neighborhood park, but it's a city citywide park. And we heard during the, the visioning that um, th this park should be for everyone and have something for everyone. And, and I think in this plan, it really, it really does. So especially for events and use of the amphitheater area, I think, um, you know, I, I think having this amount of parking makes, makes sense. So we didn't increase it from what's there now, but we have maintained the same number of spaces. I hope that answers that question. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. All right, next up I think is Council Member Esters. Thank you, Ms. Shum, and thank you gentlemen for your presentation. I'm really excited about um, the prospects here. Um, I did have two questions. One question was about the guardrail that will replace the chain link fence. Um, yes. One, I'm very excited that um, that will be changed, but my concern, <laughs> and um, I'll just, uh, ask you to uh, speak a little bit more about this. You you mentioned the guardrail and its look. Um, it looked rather low, um, but you also mentioned hedges that will be behind there. Um, given that the chain link fence is a certain height, um, I just wondered if the guardrail um, will be high enough to help to ensure that a car does not enter that space and um, maybe I didn't hear completely uh, what that will look like in the height. Yeah, okay, I can take that one. Um, sure. If anybody tries to drive into that guardrail, they're gonna be sorry. Um, because it's, it, it is a low profile, but it is a standard guardrail height okay. and it is to prevent car passage um, okay. from, so they, that, that will have a very strong performance function. And then we're gonna back it up with an evergreen hedge. Um, we have not selected the species yet. However, it will be a low maintenance evergreen hedge that would, uh, we would like it not to be too tall. I think four foot maximum would be uh, the desired height because we don't really want it to be blocking views into the park. Right. We just want to create a nice visual buffer. Um, and so that's what we intend. I hope that answered your question. It does. Thank you. And my last question <clears throat> is about the walking pathway. Um, currently, um, it actually goes right between the two fields. <clears throat> and um, I wonder if they there will be screening uh, that will be high enough to, um, to help uh, ensuring that the people who are walking across that pathway are not being hit by anything that's happening in the fields. So uh, you have currently, what I, what I saw was basketball on one side and then the other field, which is often baseball or whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to that and how long or how tall those screenings will be to help with um mitigating. yes yeah that, that's a great question and there there's going to be a um you know a, a 25 foot high fence that's going to run uh behind both of these goal posts to prevent you know balls leaving the field of play uh both here and here so yes that's a that's a great point yeah we, we neglected to mention that when he says fence it's going to be a netting style fence yeah exactly okay Thank you. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Sure. Okay, next we have uh, Carol Magnus. 
Okay, a couple questions. A follow up on the uh, fencing. I see you've mentioned it just on two sides, but if you're playing baseball, you really need to consider all four sides because you do have foul balls that have problems. They have had a lot of problems in the major leagues and the minor leagues with foul balls um, hitting people, let alone hitting uh, vehicles and things like that. So I just make that as a comment. But um, going to back to the play area, has there any um, consideration been made for having like very small places for adults to sit while the youngsters are there? Such as this, when I say small, like a ba a, the size of a basin that's upside down where somebody could sit because if a grandparent comes, they're going to, you know, sometimes the youngsters don't want to leave, be too far away from their um, relatives or whoever's bringing them to the park. Yeah. And yet those people cannot stand for a lot of the times. And I didn't see any mention of that. Well, we forgot to mention it, but <laughs> there, is, there is seating um, a, a, around the perimeter. So he's going to highlight all the seating locations. There's also the seat wall um, around the tree. So basically, that will be pretty well surrounded by seating opportunities um, for parents and grandparents. Um, okay, okay. Okay. And then when you're talking about the... Um, exercise equipment that's along the walking path. I would hope that the bars and all are not going to be just plain metal because even with uh, relatively reasonable heat, it is miserable to even touch. You know, some people have them as their railings and it's very hard to touch that in, during the summer time frame. So I don't know why, you know, what the material will be for all those bars, but it is a concern that I have, and especially since we've just finished eight days of um, miserable heat, let alone today was a little bit better, and then it's going to get worse, but not as bad, supposedly, as it has had been. Um, it's a concern that I have, that when you go to touch the thing, it's like, wait a minute, I don't want to touch it. It's metal or it's a material that really gets extremely hot. Um, that's just a, an observation. And then I have a question. I know that along, you know, one of the many times they talked about having uh, the possibility of electronic signage along the um, Rhode Island area F, 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 uh, section. And I know that the city likes to put those, um, the Black Lives Matters signs up, which I think are good, but the positioning is terrible because anybody driving on um, Rhode Island Avenue, if they try to read them, they're not watching the road. Let alone, you're gonna have National Night Out, they put something like that up there. The only people that it's, um, feasible to read is anybody entering into that area from the side street um, from the uh, west side of Rhode Island Avenue. And I didn't see any mention about having some kind of signage or some kind of capability. I know at one time they talked about having electronic signs so it would be easier to change the message or the fact that there's an activity such as you know, we had a uh, movie at Duval Field, and it would be nice to advertise that to the people. Granted, we do a lot of email, but a lot of people, they're so overwhelmed with um, email, or they don't even have access to email because they could, they could care less. And I didn't hear any mention about the signage. Is that something that's no longer under consideration? Or is it something that you just forgot? I think it was um, forgotten in the presentation and probably because the signage hasn't been 
fully designed at this point. So maybe Steve, you could show where signage is proposed and your comment about electric signage is a good one. I think that's something that should be under consideration. Yep. All right. So sign is anticipated here. Um, we've also got one anticipated at this corner. Um, we are looking at possibly putting one either, sorry, I can't type <laughs> signage there, or even across the way here. So yeah, it, it's a good point. And I think that that's, that those details still need to be worked out. Um, but yeah, we hear you loud and loud and clear. So we can okay. certainly explore okay. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just didn't want to see that it had been forgot. You know, it taken out of the plan. It's still in the plan. It's just Understood. a matter of yeah. how to do it and where to put them. Yeah. And you know, all, the, all the nitty gritty details that go along with that. Again, please consider electronic signage because that makes it much easier to change the signs than in having to, um, and, and along with the fact that it's easier to drape them. The current thing now is we drape things on the fence. And that means we have to have, we have to buy a drape for each activity or whatever you want to call that, mm -hmm. you know, that banner or drape or whatever. We're electronic, it's easy to just change it and, you know, it's done. I and think that is a good point. So now let's move um, on to Mary King. Um, good evening. Um, I've had, I have six kids that are all grown up. I've spent a lot of time at parks. Um, <laughs> so, but I see th three swings. Uh, but I don't see any swings, bucket swings for toddlers. Are there any toddler swings uh, in the program here? Uh, there are not. There, you know what I mean? There are not. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, then I, I yep. put in my plug saying that double swing looks nice, but I'd much prefer to have two bucket, and I mean two bucket swings for toddlers, um, because I, I took my compost down today and there were two families down at the park. This park is used all the time and it's, you know, for all ages, but there's a lot of small fry that come down there. Um, the other thing is I appreciate all the parking because uh, six kids, I spent 20 years of my life playing sports at Duval Field. <laughs> and we use every single one of those parking spaces, those 76. And I, I think those days are gonna come back for us too. So um, anyway, those are my comments. Thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Now, I have Council Member Adams next. Let's see. I, I first wanted to thank staff and, and thank the consultants for the excellent presentation. This looks wonderful. I can't wait for this to be built in, uh, in our community. Um, I don't really have any strong questions here. I did, did have one use case that I just wanted to make sure was considered. Um, when I drive by Duval Field, I often see of people walking their dogs on leash around the um, the playing field. So um, just want to make sure that use case is considered and that there's proper ways to, uh, you know, put trash cans and things like that, because I do anticipate that that will continue. Yeah, thank you. Great, great point. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks. Uh, Lauren Winter. Lauren, are you there? Her microphone's off. Lauren, can you unmute? Thank sorry. you. I'm so sorry. I was That's okay. lost with the unmute button for a sec. Thank you. I wanted to say thanks for the great presentation. Uh, it's been really interesting and exciting. Um, I wanted to say, uh, I've been a homeowner in College Park for 10 years, and it's my first community planning meeting, and I really enjoyed it. Nice. And um, also, I'm the coach of the University of Maryland women's rugby team, and I'm basically 
a one issue constituent here, just really interested in the rugby. And um, so I would like to ask that you please keep the storage area adjacent to the concession stand for, or please replace it if you really need to get rid of it because it is very handy to store rugby equipment. And um, I was also wondering uh, if you were planning to put a permanent soccer goalpost in the soccer field, because obviously I would prefer if they were not permanent. Um, at this point, I think that's still up in the air and, and still very much in play. So um, uh, the, the ones I think that are contemplated in the budget are the, are the removable um, goalposts and not the fixed. Okay, cool. Removable works for us. So thank you. Thank you. Terry. Yes. There's a chat question that's been on for a while. Um, can you see it? Um, the one about uh, what is engineered grass? Yes. OK, we'll take uh, that one first. Definitely I think it was covered uh, briefly in the sure. presentation. Sure, but yeah, the, the grass mm -hmm. is not engineered. It's, it's, right. <laughs> it's sod. It's a fescue mix. I guess engineered being the section itself, you know, the the sum of the parts is is the engineered portion of this of this field, um, you know. But they're all it's all constructed of natural elements, I guess, with the exception of the geotextile fabric uh, down here and the collector drain. Everything else are they're, they're natural products. I think the word engineered um, is more about the soil condition. So the 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 soil mix that is the sand. An organics mix is really the engineered portion. We're not putting, you know, native soil back there. We're removing native soil. And so the word engineered has more to do with everything that's below the grass and not the grass. Thank you, Rick. Thanks. That's very helpful. Okay, now we'll go to Todd Reitzel. Thank you. Um, how many uh, trees will be will need to be cut down, and if any, and, and how many trees will be replanted, if any? That's a great question, and I don't know that I have the answer for you right now. I'm going to probably have to follow up with, with that information, Todd. Thank you. Sure thing. And I guess I would just add, I guess if there can be some um, way to, to I'm a, I'm a member of the city tree and landscape board. And so great. if there's a way to kind of get that info through to the tree landscape board, that'd be great. Sure thing. Yeah, we can share the, the natural resource inventory and then a copy of the proposed landscape plan for you to take a look at. Great, thank you. Okay. Yes, that definitely has to be on the, on the plans. And I think there is, um, it's called a demolition plan, which shows the, the landscape material that needs to be removed. And as you heard earlier, we're doing everything we can to save um, the very nice trees at the park. Okay, um, Elena, is, are you, is that another question from you? Uh, yeah, I did have one more question if that's okay. Um, regarding sure. the bike um, regarding the bike parking facilities, um, have you decided what, um, type of bike racks you're going to use yet? Or is that still um, something that you're working on deciding? Well, I think, I think we've thrown oh. out, we've, we've thrown out this one as a, as a proposed option. Um, okay, cool. Yep. That looks great. Okay. I, I, That's a I fancy can't tell I bike a lot. Rack, <laughs> if you will. Slightly yeah. fancy yeah. U rack, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you racks are the best that, kind. <laughs> yeah, yes, I think they are too. So nothing, nothing though is set in stone at this point mm -hmm. in time. So um, that's why we're spending some time and going over everything in detail. Okay, great. Thank you. Just, I will just say no wacky designs because those are really hard to, to lock your bike to like the ones in Riverdale. They drive me, they drive me nuts. Yeah, yeah, I know they're very <laughs> cute, but we've known for quite some time that they're not efficient. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, Mary, um, are you, is, is that you again? Yeah, she's muted. She's muted. Okay, so maybe we go to uh, Council Member Kabir. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for your hard work. It's lots of work uh, been put into it. Um, the community has been waiting for this final design for, I don't know, Terry can probably tell at least 10, 10 plus years. Uh, we've been waiting. Oh, not that long. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I've, laughs> we've been. <laughs> We've been to uh, funding request. <laughs> I think this the second phase. The first phase probably started long time ago. Um, yeah. And I, I want to thank uh, the design team and Terry, you in particularly, for uh, listening to the residents, especially on the two things. Uh, there, in the earlier design, the uh, park area was proposed to be moved from where it is now, and there are a lot of concerns. Um, um, because of the loss of trees and other things. So it looks like uh, you went back and thank you for that. And also there were community concerns about using artificial turf in the main field and you agreed to use the, uh, the natural one. So thank you again for listening. Um, I have a question, actually it's not my question. It's the question I have will probably will be discussed in the council meeting. Um, the, I got a call from a resident, uh, Mark Hoffman, his name, he lives on Cherokee close to, close to a dual field um, and he couldn't attend because of family emergency. So he asked me to ask this question to you. Uh, he has seen several times uh, when the lights are maintained by the crews, um, they run the the vehicle, the maintenance vehicle through the field. And when it rains, the vehicle always gets stuck in the field and that damages the field. So he suggests um, if the, um, the walking path around, around the field is wide enough, uh, that could be used by those maintenance vehicles. So his question was how wide that, that uh, walking path is. Is it eight feet or uh, less than that? Yeah, this is a, I think it's a six foot wide path at the Excellent. moment. Okay. Yeah, so um, so I wouldn't uh, consider that wide enough for a maintenance vehicle um, at this time. So we can either you know widen up the path. Um, you know we're we're going to be switching over from you know I think you right now you have um, you know HID fixtures and we're going to be moving to LED. So the the upkeep and the maintenance. Okay should be a lot less um, with an LED fixture. Um, so I think that's that's a benefit. Um, I know they also have the ability to, you know, mobilize and, you know, they could potentially access from, you know, the perimeter in certain places and be able to, you know, reach over with a, a bucket truck or something to that effect. Um, but it's, it's a great point. And I, I think we'll, we'll definitely look a okay. little bit closer at those details. Thank you. One last question I have, again, this is on behalf of a resident who lives on Blackfoot and 50th at the corner, long-time resident, and they all their backyard always get flooded because of the storm water when it rains. Okay. Um, do you know, I know you've been spending a lot of time and money improving a storm water design. Do you think that might improve the situation? They might not getting any flood? Buddy. Yeah, so so you're saying there he, he's over here in this yes, in yes. corner right here. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think certainly um, for the field itself, right, the existing field out there is not under drained. So you're getting a lot of surface runoff. Um, mm. So I think what we're proposing here, um, the field section that we're proposing is going to be a very well drained field. Um, and I think that that he'll likely see a benefit from the water passing through the field down into the underdrain system and getting piped in there is going to certainly be a, a benefit and an improvement to drainage. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to tell her the good news. Okay. <laughs> it might be improved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, thank you all for your time and work. Thank you, sir. So, I am seeing two positive comments in the chat regarding the splash pad, which we haven't had any um, questions about. Uh, Pardon me? I do, I actually do. I mean, uh, this okay, is- Okay, well, okay, do we, um, we're going Sorry. to Dave? 
uh, for a question. I just wanted to mention the two comments in the chat, which were positive about it. And that is a major decision point. So I just wanted to call that out. If you feel strongly about it one way or the other, it'd be nice to hear from you. Well, yeah, well, I'd like to echo Lauren's concern about taking away space from the equipment room. Uh, there was no proposed plan for extra storage for equipment. So there would be on top of the cost of actually moving a pumping room and a catchment area for the water to recirculate uh, on top of the $200,000 that was already proposed to change that. Um, we'd need a design and a cost to actually have an area where the equipment for both soccer currently and rugby go, because that's what that storage room is for. Thank you. I see now um, Alan Hugh. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, I kind of had to put my question in the chat. Um, just wondering about the landscaping, if there's any um, consideration for um, pollinator type gardens or edible type trees. Um, plantings um, being from the BCD USA committee. We'd love to see some sort of educational bee, um, pollen, not just bees, but pollinator type uh, plantings, um, educational you know, signage and stuff like that. And the other thing is, is it possible to have some sort of um, sustainability um, aspect to the electric needed? In, in, in other words, solar panels or something like that to help um, offset the electric use for like the water features and stuff like that in, in the uh, little um, rec center part. Uh, uh, who wants to take that? Well, I'll <laughs> take at least part of it. Um, <laughs> so to answer your question about pollinator species. Uh, so right now we, we're, we have not done any plant selection yet. Um, we, you know, we wanted to get the, the basic approval of what, what we have um, in plan view before we do the final landscape design. However, it's always been our intention that we would use native species. And I think that the, the best opportunities for pollinators would be within the stormwater management facilities. Um, so there would be, those locations would be the, like Steve mentioned, I believe, you know, opportunities for the widest range of plant types. You know, we can put, uh, perennials in there, grasses, uh, small shrubs, native trees, small, um, and so I would think there would be, you know, very optimum opportunities for pollinators in those locations. Uh, there might be a few other locations that we would target, you know, at the entrances or maybe uh, portals or, um, you know, trailheads where we might have a little bit of pop in the landscape for, you um, you know, for some perennials that would provide pollinator opportunities as well. And of course, trees actually, trees, uh, both flowering trees, but even, you know, native trees, uh, they're pollinators as well. And we're going to have, you know, a lot of trees that will be part of the landscape. Uh, to answer the solar question, I don't think we've looked into um, solar capable lighting at this point. Um, we can add it to our discussion list. I would think most of the most of the lighting, uh, the major lighting, probably wouldn't work so well uh, <laughs> with a solar source, but perhaps some pathway lighting. Yeah, these are really. I mean, with with these LED fixtures, they are they are a very low draw um, in terms of of power. Um, so I just my hunch here is that you're not going to get a great return on investment. It's going to take a, a really long time to get that, to get that return. Um, but you know, if, if the city wants us to explore something like that, uh, we can certainly, you know, do a feasibility study to see if it's, it would be you know, worth your while to do so. What about for the pumping station? Uh, no, I mean, this is the, the pumping station for the, for the splash pad, is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't done that at this point, um, but it's something that we could take a look at if requested. Thank you. Of course. And I think there was some mention about uh, interpretive signage, and I think the the city already has some signage that they've developed for stormwater management facilities. That you know, we again, we're not to that point, and we've discussed it before. 
but you know certainly I would like to as a designer would like to see that incorporated as well the more the more storytelling you can do about the design and you know how we're you know working with and respecting the environment I think the better okay great uh it looks like we have a few more questions. Let's go to Angela Gentili. Hi, um, and I, sorry if I missed, if I didn't hear everything about the splash pad. I was trying to put the baby to sleep at the same time. Um, but hey, Angela, it's Dave. I, yeah, hi Dave. I just wanted to echo, I didn't, I, I also think that storage for the Boys and Girls Club is one of the, is very important. So I don't wanna, I, I just wanna echo, I think that's very important. I grew up using that for the Boys and Girls Club. My grandpa helped, I think, build Duval Field for the Boys and Girls Club. I think the storage is important, too. So I just wanted to echo that. But I do think some sort of a splash thing would be used um, a lot. I just joined a bunch of mom groups, and it's pretty much the only thing anyone ever talks about. So um, I think it would be very popular. <laughs> okay. Thank all. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a fine point on it. Adam. Councilmember Adam. Uh, yes, um, I wanted to revisit the pavilion. Um, it, I know that it was proposed. I think it's like an off-the-shelf product uh, that's wood. Do you know what the durability is that? Is there a you know a twenty-year, thirty-year, forty-year use case for it? What's the what type of use case does that product have? I don't know that we have that answer today, but we can certainly get that from, you know, the manufacturer and see what kind of warranty and what, you know, projected life they have on these things and get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. I would be yeah. uh, interested yeah. in that. Cause I, we do, definitely want durability, want this to last for decades. And um, if this only has a 20 year use case in our environment, that's something we should definitely consider if we need a more robust uh, material uh, for the pavilion because I think it's a great idea. Just want to make sure it's done in a in a long term feasibility approach. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Good question. We'll we'll get back to you. Thank you. I think Dave Olfke, you you have another. Oh, I question? just wanted to echo what uh, Angela was saying uh, about. I, I'm not. I was not trying to make ingest myself about not having a splash pad. I just wanted to say that it was really important that we had some measure of equipment uh, storage because. Um, you know, I, I think that the design has come so far. I mean, I've attended many of the meetings um, actually since probably 2005, 2006, when even earlier versions of this were out. Um, and I think by far and away, this kind of meets, hits a lot of uh, notes that a lot of them didn't. And I think there's a lot there for a lot of people. And I, I, I really appreciate the time and effort. One question I think that slipped by, I don't know who asked that it was an elderly woman um, that uh, was talking about, and I see that you, I've highlighted the, the backstop behind the um, baseball area. I just wonder if she's still on. I believe that you did show a backstop in one of the uh, rend uh, renderings you had. Correct. Um, and I just wanted to kind of throw it out there to make sure that you answer her question about there will be no balls on, on Rhode Island Avenue. We're trying to control as, as many of them as we, as we can with the backstop. Um, right, that's about I figured. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, I did have right. one other. I had one other question, but it's sort of a minor point. I mean, in as far as the site work goes, I obviously, I, I, I'm going to guess that a good two, th not two thirds, but a good portion of this is going to go into civil engineering and getting the um, stormwater management under control. Are there any underground catchment areas or weir catchments that the city is going to be responsible for keeping clean for any runoff and materials that hit that? Is that proposed at all in any of the civil engineering? Uh, not yet, but there will be, um, you know, an underground stormwater facility located in this corner um, to be able to deal with the uh, hundred year runoff from the property. So there's likely going to be a, a vault of some sort here uh, with a weir in it that will have manhole access that, that somebody can get down in there um, or get a vac truck to be able to, to vac out anything. My only point would be is that like when you hand over the project management manual, that something like that, I mean, I'm in contracting, I've been doing this for a long time, but um, sure. that 
the city is aware of that because I've done work in Hyattsville and I got a phone call 10 years after a project saying that their parking lot was flooding. And I said, well, have you cleaned out your weir? Uh -huh. And they, they hadn't touched it. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, Throwing it's, it out uh, there. Yep. Yep. No, that, that's great. And, you know, maintenance schedules are, are on plan in Prince George's County for, for DPI for plan approvals. It's something that we, we put on all our plans, specifications on how to build it. And they've got yeah. lines for maintenance will be on the approved documents. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great point. Okay. I think um, council member Kabir, did you have another question? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just, just want to uh, echo everyone's interest in adding rather having the, um, the uh, splash pad and uh, and you mentioned in the previous meetings as well quite a few residents also asked for it uh so i i understand the uh, challenge you have about the storage i was just wondering if you play your magic to find another place to have the storage so because we can have you both camps um i don't know you, is there any way uh, you know i'm not an architect um the uh amphitheater area you have the seating arrangement i don't know if you can make a space a storage space underneath there or not i don't know if there is other people have been doing it and i mean you can probably tell um, more than i can do so i just want to request you to consider it to see if that if both can happen thank you hey terry i had one more thing to add if sure, you don't ahead. mind, if you don't mind, um, yeah. about the, the goals. I mean, the city, I went to the city about six years ago and requested the uh, movable goals that we have. They were $10,000 that I don't think that we really want to get rid of. They're good. They just need new nets. The one thing that they did not come with, uh, all we have are sandbags currently to hold them in place. And also to Lauren's point, because they do want to play rugby on this field. And now that it's going to be big enough to play rugby there, and I'm all in on that because with Lauren, and the people that she's associated with, I've already gone to the Boys and Girls Club with a proposal from them to actually start a youth rugby uh, program. Um, we just haven't gotten there. COVID kind of got in the way but in, in life. But um, to speak of the, um, the something like so, uh, to, to work with the set of goals that we currently have so that we would have at least some lockdown mechanisms that would could be either like, uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a concrete, you know, um, sauna tubes or something with little, I don't know, uh, something, something that would be flush with the, the, the yep. surrounding area that would allow for us to actually maneuver them in place, lock them down, make them completely safe and not have kids, you know, spend half the practice hauling sandbags back and forth. Good comment. Yep. Great. And we have talked um, a little bit about finding alternative locations for uh, storage for field use. And um, so we'll be continuing uh, to look at that to, just to address Council Member Kabir's comment. You mean since we got kicked out of Davis Hall, but that's a, that was a. Long I didn't say ago. that. <laughs> I know I did, but whatever. All right. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, it would be really nice to have enough, at least, I mean, all we're really providing right now for youth um, it, for the city of College Park is soccer. And it's the only thing that I've done. I've been in the city 58 years. I'm 60 years old. I was part of the club as a kid and I have been part of the uh, youth pro, uh, project or youth um, programs since my kids were young and I'm still at it. And um, this is my 28th year. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm myself and one other coach right now are sort of making sure that at least we're providing some measure of soccer and uh so we plan on on using this as a huge stepping stone i mean it's a, a really a game-changing plan i think it's going to be great okay thank you um and mary uh, i think you do have another uh comment thank you so much i appreciate that uh, I just wanted to speak to the um, the water pad. And that was an idea that came very, very late. In fact, I think it was really at the last council meeting. I recall Kate Kennedy being very excited about it and being told then that it was um, something that was expensive, but they would look into it. And, you know, just as they said it, I mean, it does look exciting, but it is got a $200,000 price tag, but it also has a $30,000 maintenance. 
Uh, so I think you have to start weighing some of these things. Um, it's only going to be used in the summertime. You got cornhole there, but also the storage I think is so important um, for the uh, because the it the the focus of the field is the sports as well. It's a place to go out and play um, big sports, not just for the boys and girls club. I drive by there all the time. There are people there playing soccer and other sports there all the time and at the park. Uh, I think there's a liability that it's, you know, it's an attractive nuisance. And so I'm wondering, you know, what the insurance might, you know, be to go up with, you know, a facility like that. Um, and so I, I beg you to think that there are other things to consider uh, to, before we jump into the splash pad. It's a very splashy, exciting idea. Ho, ho. That's my pun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I do think that's one of the biggest decision points left uh, regarding the, the park. And so I think the city council um, um, will weigh your comments and, um, and they need to provide direction uh, to staff on how to move forward so we can get these plans finalized, out to bid and the park under construction. So anyone else, um, last minute questions, comments? If not, I really want to thank the KCI team for their presentation tonight. I think it was um, you know, very detailed and thorough. I appreciate uh, that. And thank you to all the residents who came out who offered really good comments. Um, I think um, there are definitely several things for the consultants to follow, follow up on and they will do that. And we will be getting back to the city council in September, either the 6th or the, the 13th, looking to confirm that uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Great, thank you all. Okay, so thank you everyone again and good night. Thank you, good night. Good night. Let's have pie.